I'm Megan with Happy Tails Pet Care and I'm a professional pet expert and nutrition consultant. My goal is to educate people about animals and help pet owners provide the best care to their beloved pets. See a pet in my video you like? Let me know and I will feature that pet in more videos. Welcome back everyone. This video is going to be about how to make your dog a service dog. And the reason that I'm doing this video is because I get asked this a lot. When I'm out, people see me and they come up and they're like, I wanna make my dog a service dog. And online too, I see a lot of people say, oh, I wanna make my dog a service dog, but none of them really seem to know how to go about it. So let's start off first by saying that this video is going to be about service dogs only. This is not going to be about emotional support dogs or therapy dogs. And if you guys don't know the difference between a service dog, an emotional support dog, and a therapy dog, then please go ahead and watch my other video, What is a Service Dog, here. And this video is going to be able to tell you all about what a service dog is and what emotional support dogs are and therapy dogs and the differences between all of those assistance animals. Okay, so you see someone take their dog everywhere and you're wondering how can I do that? So the very first thing is to understand why a person is able to take their dog everywhere with them. Access rights, which is being able to enter any public place with a service dog, is covered under the Americans with Disability Act. We'll be calling the Americans with Disability Act the ADA for short. The ADA states that the definition of a service dog is a dog that has been trained to perform tasks for somebody who has a disability. The ADA recognizes only dogs and miniature horses as service animals. So for any of those interested in getting a service parrot, a service pig, a service lizard, any of that, it's actually not covered under the ADA. So it is impossible to have a service animal that is not either a miniature horse or a dog. And of course, dogs are the most common service animals. Okay, so now that you know the definition of a service dog, let's move into what this means. This means that in order to qualify for a service dog, you must be diagnosed with a disability by a doctor. And at this point, some of you may be thinking, well, I've seen service dogs out in public with their handler and their handler seem perfectly fine, normal. A lot of disabilities are what we call invisible disabilities. So while the use of a service dog is obvious for some disabilities, like people who are blind or people in a wheelchair, many disabilities are actually not able to be seen. Diabetes, epilepsy, and psychiatric disorders are just some of the invisible disabilities that people live with. So remember, in order to have a service dog, you must have a disability and talk to your doctor about it. So you may be thinking, well, I have achy bones and I must be able to have a service dog. Self-diagnosis does not work when it comes to federal laws. You need to have the medical records in order to back yourself up. And I'm not saying that if you don't have this, you don't have a disability. Some people just haven't been diagnosed yet. But if you do want to use a service dog, you need to go to your doctor and get diagnosed. And also find out what your other treatment options may be. Okay, so now you have your diagnosis from your doctor, you've talked to your doctor, and you have their support to use a service dog. At this point, most people start looking for an agency to get a service dog from that is already trained. But you're watching this video, so you think you already have a dog that will make an excellent candidate for a service dog. So here's a couple things to consider. Can your dog perform the tasks to help you with your disability? Remember, the ADA states that a service dog is a dog that has been trained to perform tasks for a person with a disability. So the fact that you have a disability doesn't make your dog a service dog, not yet. The reason that people use a service dog is to make their overall quality of life better. So service dogs aren't just there to make you feel better, they're there to do a job. So let's say that your diagnosis is fibromyalgia and you have trouble walking and your dog is a Cocker Spaniel. What you will need is a mobility support dog, and a Cocker Spaniel is just way too small for this. So your dog won't be able to be a service dog because it just isn't capable of performing what you need it to do. But if your diagnosis is something like diabetes, you need a medical alert dog. 
So size doesn't matter, and a Cocker Spaniel could do this if it could be trained to alert to drops and increases in blood sugar. Service dogs come in all shapes and sizes, so it really depends on what your disability is and what you are expecting of your dog. But on an important note, it is illegal to have a service dog in a shopping cart. Okay, so now you have your medical records and your dog is the appropriate size to perform the tasks that you need. The next question is, is your dog healthy enough to be a service animal? For this, you should get a veterinarian's advice. They can check to see if your dog has any signs of hip dysplasia or anything else that would hinder it from being able to perform its job. Remember that for dogs, being a working dog is tiring and you wanna make sure that your dog is in the best of health in order to perform their job and make sure that they can do it without any complications. And you also don't want your dog's health to deteriorate by using them as a service animal. Okay, so you have your medical records, your dog is the right size to perform the duties, and your dog is healthy. So what's next? Does your dog have the temperament to be a service animal? Dogs are wonderful animals and every dog owner out there believes that their dog is the best dog in the world. And they're not wrong. But not every dog out there has what it takes to be a service dog. We expect so much from service dogs and it's not easy for them. While out working, a service dog needs to be able to ignore everything around them except for their handler. Does your dog bark at squirrels? Do they get really excited when they see another dog? Do they beg for food from you every time that you're eating? Do they want to greet people that they see? Do they want to jump up on people or other things? Do they pull a lot on their leash when you're out walking? All of these things are things that would disqualify a dog from being a service animal. Your dog's obedience needs to be 100% in order to consider using him as a service dog. The truth is, is that we spoil our dogs and we express our love by being lenient with them. Most service dogs from agencies are trained from birth of how to react and how to behave and how to ignore distractions around them. So not every dog can be a service dog. A service dog's worst day is still better than a pet dog's best day. And your access rights are granted based on your dog's behavior. So don't think that somebody with a service dog can go into a public place with their service dog no matter what. If the dog misbehaves, the management has every legal right to ask them to leave. A handler and their service dog represent the entire service dog community when they're out in public. So please, only consider your dog if you have an exceptional dog. Don't give the rest of us a bad reputation. Okay, so you have your medical record, your dog is the appropriate size, your dog is in great health, and your dog has excellent behavior. At this point, you are certain that your dog has what it takes to be a service dog. After all of this, you can now start to get your dog trained to be a service animal. While most of us can manage potty training and some basic obedience, anything outside of this is usually beyond most people's experience and knowledge. Some very experienced people can train their own service dog. However, most people should consult with a professional dog trainer. And I'm not talking about the dog trainers at the pet stores. Uh, they usually don't have the knowledge that it takes to task train a service dog. Start looking up dog trainers in your area and see if there's any that train service dogs. Remember, the service dog community is relying on you to have a very well-trained service dog. Service dogs are classified as medical equipment and using a fake service dog is a federal offense. Falsely claiming that a pet is a service animal is punishable by federal fines and jail time. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up to help my channel. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe. You can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook and read my blog at mjhappytales.com. Thanks for joining me.